12.1, limit of convergence and some calculations. Well, here's the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom and electricity or heat can be used to excite that electron to a higher main energy level. Well, let's look at those main energy levels. They go from n equals one all the way through to, well, actually through to n equals infinity, but I stopped at nine for clarity's sake. Okay, so let's imagine that the electron is excited and as it goes back to the n equals one level, it releases a photon of ultraviolet light. As it's excited with a greater energy, it comes back down to the n equals one with a greater energy. And you can see the line spectra being produced. Now eventually, if you give that hydrogen atom and its associated electron enough energy, it will leave. It will reach the n equals infinity. And you've just made an iron. So those lines meet at 91 nanometers, which is the so-called limit of convergence. Okay, table eight, first ionization energy. And that's wrong. Well done, IB. Uh, that's completely wrong. It should be 1,312 kilojoules per mole. Let me define first ionization energy for you. It's the energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms. Okay, let's look at a question. Hydrogen has a first ionization energy of 1,312 kilojoules per mole. Oh, bugger. That should be capital J for joules. Calculate the wavelength in nanometers for the limit of convergence observed in the line spectrum. Well, we know the answer is 91 nanometers. That's where the ultraviolet light converged uh, on the previous animation. Wavelength, well, that's, well, that's an upside down Y, which is pronounced lambda. Now, where would you find the equation that has the lambda or wavelength in? Well, table one of the data booklet. It's that equation just there. The first sentence of the question mentions ionization energy. And so let's look where energy is in the equations. Well, it's E equals H nu. That curly V is pronounced nu, N-U, and it means frequency. Yep, there's the equation there, also in table one. So essentially, you've just got to put the numbers in to get the wavelength. Planck's constant. You've turned the page, it's table two, right down at the bottom there. And that's a really small number. 10 to the minus 34. And here comes the first little problem. Planck's constant is measured using joules as the energy unit. And yet the question is in kilojoules per mole. So we're going to have to fix that. So multiply by a thousand and that turns the kilojoules into joules. And to get rid of that pesky per mole but divide it by Avogadro's constant, and that gets rid of the per mole. Okay, so now our energy is in joules, and it will fit with Planck's constant now. So I'm going to rearrange that to get mu, and actually that's frequency. That used to be F, I think, in the old syllabus, but that means frequency. And that's in per seconds or you could say hertz as well. And now let's put the frequency into that equation. Okay, so the speed of light C is given also in table two, but it's not obvious that it's C, it doesn't say C, but C is the speed of light. And so by putting in our frequency from the previous equation, I can calculate lambda, lambda being the wavelength. Now, when we do this, it's going to come out in meters. And the answer is supposed to be in nanometers. Now, since there are a billion nanometers in a meter, there we go. Now, notice that number is the same as the limit of convergence that we saw in the first animation, about 91 nanometers. Okay, here's another question to try, and there's the answer. See if you can do that. 